Good evening and welcome to our March 15th Board of Education meeting. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. Ms. Dwan Craft is going to lead us in our invocation. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to read from Life is Better at the Beach, an inspiration for living each day like you're at the beach. Riding your first wave can be scary. Though the waves may seem big and intimidating, there comes a moment when you decide to go for it. You get in the water, even though your legs tremble and the water is frigid. You watch for a wave, and then you let it carry you. The first time might not go well. Water might get up your nose, or you might get tossed around a bit. But you did it, and that's what matters. But after that first time, riding the waves doesn't seem so scary anymore. You look for a bigger wave. You turn to meet it, and you feel exhilarated. With each swell, you become more confident. Riding the waves looks a lot like bravery. It looks like being bold, bigger little decisions, settling a conflict, taking a new job, setting boundaries, seeking help, saying no. These are all actions that take some boldness. They take bravery, and they may look insurmountable at times. You may not always be successful. Life is tricky in many ways, and sometimes even the best intentions or most innocent approach turns into a sticky situation. But more often than not, being bold opens you up to more possibilities, more courage, and a strange, stronger sense of self. You'll gain the respect of others around you, and you'll also respect yourself more. Take that bold step, step and ride a wave today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. At this time, I would like to call our principal at Griggs Elementary School, Mr. Mike Greco, if he'll come up and uh, some of his students are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Greco, and they're actually our school spotlight tonight, if you'd like to continue to introduce Well, thank you, uh, Chairman Etheridge, Dr. Lutz, board members. Um, this is a great opportunity for our students so that they can showcase all their, their, their talents that they've been working on over the past six years. You talk about that wave. Tonight is going to be their chance to get on that wave, on that surfboard <laughs> and ride that wave tonight. Um, we have, uh, Miss Ryan and I are very, very proud that we are here tonight to spotlight our students and teachers for all of their hard work. Um, Miss Corletto and, and Miss Johnson are exceptional teachers and they've been working with their students on a lot of different things throughout the year. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves and their students to you at this time. Ms. Johnson, Ms. Corletto. Ms. Corletto, come on up. <laughs> You're not getting away with this. Ride that wave. <laughs> My greatest support. Good evening. My name is Moana Johnson. I'm a fifth grade ELA teacher at W.T. Griggs Elementary. My goal this year has been to grow a deep love and appreciation of reading within my students. I've done this through engaging read aloud novels with themes and genres that include adventure, historical fiction, immigration, disabilities, and of course, fifth grade drama. <laughs> we read aloud every ELA session. Our read alouds are always followed with groans of, just one more chapter. This is when I know I've got them. The conversations that follow allow us to think deeply about literature themes. This develops empathy and the ability to see the world from another perspective. 
Exposing students to a variety of interesting reading experiences can be a challenge, so when the opportunity came up to introduce an element of competition into our reading program, I knew our students would be motivated and enthusiastic about it. The opportunity to be part of a global reading initiative was just too exciting to pass up. Read Theory is a program that allows students to read short passages, respond to reading comprehension questions, and gain knowledge points. It's an effective way for students to practice and gain important reading mileage. The competition included 40,000 students in 80 different countries. Over 350,000 reading comprehension passages were read in total. 1,128 classes participated including ours. Our final ranking was 21st. Oh, wow. I'm so proud of their perseverance and their achievement. My fabulous students will now share their experiences of our reading program in this competition with you. My name is Kenzie, and one thing I really like about reading in my class is my novel. It's called Drew to My Home Girl, but I finished that one, so now I'm reading a book called Something Upstairs, and it is a little spooky but interesting. <laughs> I really like to read. I'm even in the Battle of the Books team. Now about the Read Theory competition. I read 57 passages in past 36. I got 3,369 knowledge points. My average grade level is grade five. The read theory competition was very intense and everyone wanted to get first place. We tried very hard and we were very close. This competition made me feel that I can do it if I try. Um, this is one of the novels that I've read. My name is Ryan Jaguki, and in my ELA class with Ms. Johnson, we competed in a global competition for read theory. Read theory is when we read articles and then take quizzes on them. Every day, I was surprised at what places we were in, and I got so excited. I got a perfect score on 37 out of 60 quizzes. I got 3,627 knowledge points in, in the competition. It was so cool to be in a global competition. It showed me I can compete and go hard. We are currently reading a book called Drew to My Homegirl, a 32-chapter book. I finished this book and have written a summary for each chapter. I'm getting ready to start a new book called Something Upstairs. Miss Johnson makes reading lots of fun. And this is the book I've mentioned. Buenas tardes. Me llamo Bridget Castillo. I really enjoy lots of books and I don't have a favorite one yet. There are some books I really enjoy which are Rules, Chains, Esperanza, Wonder, and much more. I really like to get in groups and discuss our novels. When we began our read theory competition, I was anxious of what I would achieve, but I was surprised at the end because our rankings start, started at the 200s or 100s and ended at the 20s. I hoped we could make it to the top tens, be, be, but we did our best and pushed through it. At that time, I read 56 passages and passed 46 and went to a 6th and 7th grade level. Mm -hmm. I also got 3,645 3, knowledge points. I was surprised and happy with what I achieved. Gracias por su tiempo. And this is the book I mentioned. My name, <clears throat> my name is Perry Yates, and I read the novel My Side of the Mountain. In our reading group, this group contained Addie, Waylon, and Layla. These people helped me during writing about our novels. But when Miss Johnson held the read theory competition, I was super scared every day when Miss Johnson showed the rankings because I knew I could do better. I kept pushing myself until I felt comfortable doing this daily. We were very persistent to get to the top ten. I also read 58 passages in past 33. 
The amount of knowledge points I earned was 3,291. Also, the re-theory competition was like a roller coaster because we were so low in the rankings but moved in, up in the rankings quickly. I changed my emotions a lot. This competition showed me I need to believe in my own abilities. I give all my thanks to Ms. Johnson for helping me through this year. And this is the book I read. Buenas noches. Me llamo Catherine Misama. I mostly enjoy historical fiction books like Foster's Boy and Chains. Foster's War is mostly based on the true events of the attack on Pearl Harbor and on the events leading to the infamous plot of the book. I find historical fiction books rather interesting, astonishing, and important to modern life. During the beginning of the Read Theory competition, I wondered what I would accomplish. I went all the way towards 8th grade reading levels in just one week. I ended up achieving 3,505 knowledge points and passed 42 quizzes out of 55. I found it rather surprising how much I ended up achieving throughout that one week. Gracias por su tiempo. And this was one of the books I've also mentioned. My name is Uriah Forbes and I love the novel book Desperate Jenny. The thing that I love about it is that I get to read it with my reading group, which is Sila, Christopher, Niash, Melody, Kaylee, and myself. I'm also learning a lot of new vocabulary. My class and I just finished reading a book called Chains, and it was a very good book. It was about the life of a slave girl and how it was back then. And for the weekday competition, I read 139 passages and passed 91 of them. I also got 800, not 800, 8,736 knowledge points in the competition and went up to 11th grade level, oh which goodness. was really hard. I passed my pretest average, that was a 5th grade level, and beat it with a 6th grade level as a program average. I also thought that it was very fun because we were trying to get to the top, and we kept getting closer and closer to the top of the leaderboard, even though it was hard. This competition, me, this competition showed me that if I try hard enough, I can go to what I am capable of doing. And then, this is the book that my class and I read. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations to all of you. What I'd like to ask you to do is come back to the microphone one by one, state your name, and just tell us briefly one thing <coughs> that you like about the book that you are currently reading, one thing that stands out, whether it be that something up in the attic or just one thing. All right? Who's first? <laughs> um, my name is Kenzie Garrett. Um, one thing I really like about the book is that it's a real mystery because, um, because there's a ghost in the attic and the boy just moved to that house. Oh, okay, thank you very much. All right, next. My name is Ryan Jaguki, and in my book, I like how it has different cultures, and I can see the different ways that they act and speak. Wonderful, thank you. My name is Bridget Castillo, and this book is has a lot of drama and violence. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and violence. I love it. Girl after my own heart. <laughs> my, name, my name is Perry Yates, and the one thing I liked about My Side of the Mountain is it was about a kid who lived in the mountains and survived for about a few years. Oh, wow. Okay. I couldn't do that. My name is Kathy Lozama. What I liked about my book is it it's that it's actually based on true events that actually happened. Okay. Interesting. My name is Uriah Forbes and the thing that I loved about Pats is all the adventures that was in it and like how there's teamwork and whatnot. Team. Let me ask you a question, because I think I misunderstood you. What reading, reading level are you on? For the read theory? Mm -hmm. So right now, I am on a level seven. Okay, 
All right. Wow. And what grade are you in? Grade level. Fifth. Fifth. Okay. Good for you. Did I hear one of the students say they were going to be in the Battle of the Books that's coming up soon? Uh, yeah. Did I? <laughs> I thought so. I'm excited. I'm, a, I'm the moderator usually for uh, that, so I'm really excited about that. So I'll be glad to see you in April. Yes, yeah, you'll see you soon. I like, you. I like this competition. I think that's very motivating, and it reminds me of Accelerated Reader, you know, and that really motivated kids to read. So right. hats off to all of you. Reading is so wonderful. And you all did a great job speaking. That's yes, very important, did. too. It starts at 9, I believe. We need a new calendar. That's what I go by that. Has she given us one? Not lately. All right, guys. On three, we got like 9,000 cameras pointing at you. Ready? <laughs> On three, one, two, three. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Mr. Greco, Ms. Ryan, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Corletta, is that correct? Yeah, Corletta. Corletta, thank you for being here and thank you for all the hard work and dedication that you have for our students. It shows on nights like tonight, especially when we see what they are doing in the classroom and learning and, and enjoying reading, and there's nothing better. So keep up the good work, and we're, we're very proud of, of everyone. All right, swearing in of our student board members, we have our wonderful clerk of court, Mr. Ray Matusko, here with us tonight. Thank you for being here, Ray. As always, it's, it's so nice to see you. Thank you. I wanted to thank Dr. Loops and the board for inviting me out. It's always an honor to come out and, and uh, honor our, our future leaders here. Yes. It's hard to follow that group. That just <laughs> that. Uh, but if I could have uh, Charlotte Solix and her family come up, please. This, this really is, it's really an honor, and I know mom, mom's really, really proud of you. This is, this is great, and I know you're doing it because you have a passion for it, but this would be really good on a co college application, too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand, do you, Scarlet, solid, solemnly swear that you'll support the Constitution of the United States and hope you got and do you further solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof, and that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and def defend the constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability, so help you God? And do you swear that you will perform the duties of the student board member for Curta County Schools to the best of your knowledge, skill, and ability to help you out. Congratulations. Yay. Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte. Yes, you can take your seat. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. We're, we're glad you're on the board. Congratulations. And then we have Sophia O'Shear. Yep. 
And if mom and dad will be to her left side. And Sophia, if you want to introduce your parents, it would be wonderful. <laughs> well, you, you've heard it. So if you'll put your left hand on the bottom, raise your right hand. Do you, Sophia O'Shea, solemnly swear that you'll support the Constitution of the United States? So you got it. And do you further swear that you'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof? And that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability, so you got it. Okay. And do you swear that you will perform the duties of a student board member for Curtis County Schools, to the best of your knowledge, skill, and ability, so help you got it? Congratulations. You are now a student member of the school. Yay. Congratulations, Sophia. Welcome to the board. Yes, welcome. We're glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, for being here again. Well, we really appreciate it. More than happy. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment session. We have one individual that signed up. The public comment session is a time when an individual or a group can address the board about our schools. This is not a time to speak about issues or concerns involving identifiable personnel or students. Matters of this nature should be submitted in writing to the superintendent, and your concerns will be addressed. Individuals or groups will be called in the order in which they are signed up and will be asked to limit their remarks to three minutes. Ms. Renee Dowdy. Good evening, Chairman Etheridge, members of the board, Dr. Lutz. I am here representing a much younger and prettier Rebecca Palumbo, who is our pre-K coordinator, who was unable to be here tonight, but wanted to make sure that we gave a huge shout out to a very special uh, donor who donated some supplies to the pre-K program. So on behalf of Ms. Palumbo, the Exceptional Children's Preschool Department and her would like to thank Mrs. Jordan Hassani and family, the owners of Baba's Pizzeria in Chesapeake for organizing a very generous donation drive for our program. Ms. Hassani visited one of our classrooms and was so moved by what she has observed in the pre-K program that she purchased and donated several items for the children. She then started, shared her story on social media and the restaurant's social media page, and she collected a tremendous amount of classroom supplies, learning materials, sensory items, and technology devices that have been shared and distributed across our four EC pre-K programs, classrooms in our district. Our students and our teachers are incredibly grateful for the kind-hearted contributions from the community members who donated and are especially thankful to Ms. Hassani and her family for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's nice. That's wonderful. We thank those in the community that, that give back. Do I have an approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a first and I have a second. Any discussion? I would like to ask that we remove item five, budget amendments from the consent agenda, just to get further explanation and discussion. Okay. All right, any other discussion? All in favor of the agenda with the exception of item five, say aye. 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 All opposed? The agenda is approved with that one exception. Transportation update. Jimmy Calvert. <coughs> they come with bags. <laughs> Good evening, Board, Board Chair Etheridge, Good Dr. Evening. Lutz, and fellow staff members. <clears throat> Tonight, to assist me with transportation presentation, I have beside me Jessica, Becky, and Regina. At this point, I'd like to present a quick PowerPoint summary of transportation over the past 15 years of the changes that, that has occurred, occurred over these years. years. This is 
Uh oh. And at this point, we're going to go over the team members that make up transportation. <laughs> we originally had music to this, but the device didn't ball. play. What are you <laughs> saying? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want my thing. <laughs> That's right. A lot of the drivers were shy, so this is not quite all the drivers and monitors. Like, <laughs> they didn't want to get their picture. You can get a picture, but someone ran. Yeah. <laughs> Many of these drivers have been with the school system at least 15 to 45 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, we have a few new ones. Me and Miss Sutton have been, we started actually together. Trish is one of our fairly new drivers. We've been able to recruit some Chesapeake drivers over to Curtis County, which is a plus. Um, at this time, Mandy Williams actually came from, I think it's Fairfax, Virginia. She retired after 30 years being there, and she moved to Curtis. Miss Cody's been here for 30 years. Yes, I was about to say. I know she's been with us a long time. Fine. Mr. Paul. Always has a hat on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Linda is retiring this year. Wow. Mr. Paul and his wife, Barbara, both work here. We have many joint staff members, and I'm very pleased to have them with us. So the celebrating the 30 and 45 years, there's four team members I like to recognize for their outstanding driving years with us. Each of these drivers show true leadership, dedication, and teamwork on a daily basis. No matter what time of day I call any of these four drivers, they are willing to help. And many times I've had to put them down there at the elementary school, please go drive, split it up like three different ways, drive this and then run to the high school. They're there to help me. It is an honor for me to recognize Betty Spain and Liz Cody for 30 years Woo! of service. <laughs> Miss Ella Skinner and Christine Woodley for 45 oh years. Oh my of gosh, service. wow. Woo, come on up here, y'all. At this time, I like to call Betty, Liz, and Ella up here. 
And we have the transportation. We have the gate. Each of you a pen. I know y'all were saying years ago you received a pen for years of service and a plaque with your name engraved in it with your years of service. I truly appreciate all your hard work because without y'all, transportation is not a complete team. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you all. What an honor. Y'all are amazing. Yes. All right, everybody. On three. Ready? One, two, three. Good job. Thank you. Woo! Thank you so much, Mr. Calvert. Can I jump in? Thank you for letting me highlight my department. Is there any questions? I was just wondering real quick, is there any way, I don't know how much trouble it is, Ms. Dowdy, to go back to those first two slides just to see, and pause on it a minute, just to see the difference? It's just interesting to okay. see. So how many buses do we have on the road today? 37. Okay. And back in 2006 and seven, there were 57. At that point, every school had their own bus. Right. right. And now um, we're sharing. We're, we're sharing. So the, the sharing of the buses has tremendously helped, especially during this time of being short staff members. But we're very fortunate in Curtis County that I had every bus slot filled. But as for substitutes, that's a whole different game. Plan. I saw you at the. Hi, at the home show, yes, recruiting. Hats off to you for, yes, for taking you. your Saturday to do that. Yes. We're glad to have you back, too, Jimmy. Yes. We are. We are. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, basically, to recap, we're from that time frame, we're 20 less buses on the road. Oh, wow. We're carrying right around 300 less students, but that's due to COVID. Um, I'm seeing a growth in the northern end of the county. On average, each school, except the high school, we're carrying about half of the total amount that's within the school system at that school. Um, the average ride time um, back, I believe, at that time was, I think, 50 minutes, and now we're at 40. Um, the average longest ride time was like two hours and nine minutes. Take some give a little, right now we're about an hour and 45. There's sometimes there's you know, things to go over and so forth. And we have reduced the mileage over 100,000 by just combining bus routes and not having three or four buses going to the same neighborhood. Good. So in the long run, you know, it saves them fuel That's right. and so forth, especially with fuel prices right now for oh, school yeah. system is $3.09 for diesel. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and congratulations Calvert. to all of the Thank you, thank you Mr. Calvert. Thank, thank you very Excellent. much. all for getting our children to school safe. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank and you. I'm going to tell a little story on Betty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Look, I was having a morning when <laughs> I, my three kids were like ages 5, 7, and 11 maybe. And I had a meeting that morning that I had to get to, and the kids were not ready for school. And I knew the bus was coming down the lane. And uh, I got them out there, but whew, she went by me. And I'm like, <laughs> those kids are getting on that bus. <laughs> I don't have time to take them to Griggs. So I said, get in the car, kids. And I chased you down. <laughs> Do you remember that? And I had my nightgown on and my <laughs> and curlers in my hair and that I had my robe, my velvet robe, <laughs> and chased you down and I and blinking my lights and acting like a crazy person. Do you remember? That's probably 25 years ago. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> of course right. she does. That velvet robe gave it away. <laughs> it's etched into her memory. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> 25 years later, I hope you accept my apology. But again, thank you all for everything you do, keeping our kids safe. 
we applaud you, yeah, y'all are and, amazing. and we love you. Yeah. Thank you. I just, <laughs> Betty I'd like also, to make a comment. Betty comes oh. from, Betty learned from the best. <laughs> Because yes, her mother that's right. drove a bus for a long, long time. How many years, Betty? So she was trained. She trained you well. Yes. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. I'd like to make a comment. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Back uh, when I was superintendent, I used to talk to the bus drivers before the beginning of every school year. And I get up in front of them, and I told them the same thing every year, so they probably ought to remember it. I said, you have the most difficult job in the district, yeah. and I would never have it. That's the one job I would never <laughs> take as bus driver. Right. Because it's hard, it's hard enough to control 30, 35 kids in front of you, much less 50 uh -huh. behind you. <laughs> that's and right. that's, that's the truth. And uh, also, Christine... Geez, when I was high school principal here, she drove bus for the high school. <laughs> and that was, I won't say how many years ago that was. <laughs> and I think Betty's mother drove for me yeah. to high school. So yeah. well, thank anyway, you. thank you for your service. You have a really difficult job, and I appreciate everything you do. Absolutely. Yes. All right, moving on to our student board members. Daniel, would you like to start us off? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening. And I'm going to start us off with Central Elementary School. Central Elementary enjoyed re celebrating Reading Across America with a fun spirit week. Our kids read Dr. Seuss stories and enjoyed reading together throughout the week. Central Eagles participated in a very successful fundraiser for Kids Heart Challenge and celebrated with an inflatable obstacle course at the end of the challenge. Special thanks to those families who donated. Everyone had a blast. We also appreciated our bus drivers during Love the Bus Week. We are grateful for each and everyone and truly appreciate all they do for Central Elementary. One last shout out goes to our teachers. We have implemented a new intervention program that supports small group instruction and intervention for students in the area of math. Teachers have worked hard to provide support to students across all grade levels with a focus on priority standards. Great things are happening at Central. Currituck County High School. It's that time of the year where students begin receiving acceptances and scholarships to post-secondary institutions. We have had some notable scholarships awarded to our students. We are so proud of all of our Knights who plan to enroll, enlist, or employ after high school. Check out our social media page for some more information and shout-outs to our Knights being rewarded for the academic and athletic success. A few weeks back and in the month of February, we had National FFA Week and National CTE Month. Our agriculture students have a busy in the classroom with FFA activities and events. National FFA Week is a time for FFA members to raise awareness about the role that the National FFA Organization plays in supporting agricultural education and developing agriculture's future leaders. So for first place in Creed, we had Haley Bassis from our school, first place extemporaneous public speaking, Ariana Seltzer, and first place for prepared public speaking, Caden Lowe, first place for parliamentary procedure, Emma Marshall, Luke Morgan, Morgan Harris, Abby Green, Amber Jones, and Callie Bassnett, and first place for job interview, Daniel Walker. For Currituck County Middle School, CCMS has been busy preparing for our spring sports and beginning of our final athletic season for the school year. We wish all of our athletes a great season. Also, some of our students recently participated in the FFA Federation Leadership Event at the Extension Office, and we are very proud of Kendall Young, who took second place in public speaking, and Melody Hill, who took first place in the Creed. I'm going to pass it over to Scarlett for our next two schools. For Griggs Elementary School has had, oh. Elementary School has had an eventful month. We celebrated Love the, month, Love the Bus Month and showed our appreciation with cards, gifts, foods, and praise. Thank you, for, thank you to our drivers and monitors, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Simpson, Ms. Ethel Powell, Ms. Liz Cody, Ms. Donna Grandy, and Ms. Marilyn Henderson. We celebrated Read Across America Week with a week of planned events. Our Dr. Seuss-themed Title One Night was held for families and students. Activities, games, free books, and dinner was provided for all. It was a great night. We had a PTO school movie night with over 130 people in attendance. Snacks, juice, and popcorn were, sort, were enjoyed by all. 
we held a school fundraiser which was very successful. Our school earned money to support our students and teachers were able to earn gifts, gift cards for their classroom to use on whatever they wish to buy. We are getting ready for our GES Spring Carnival on Friday, March 25th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Come on out. For JPNAP Early College, the JPK recruitment window closed March 4th. We will soon be in the process of conducting interviews for all applicants. In addition, it's a busy month for JPK clubs with several events on the March agenda. Events include Ms. Fallon's I Feel Lucky event on March 17th, Math Club's Pi Day, and Pi Week celebration slash Penny Wars. FBLA state leadership competition is from March 24th to the 27th. JPK's SGO Siegel Fest on March 28th through April 1st. Thank you, Scarlett. I'm going to continue with Jarvisburg Elementary School. Jarvisburg celebrated our bus drivers in February. We truly appreciate Liz Cody, Donna Grandy, and Ethel Powell, and our monitor, Marilyn, for all they do. Read Across America Week was a big success with theme days planned by Molly Parker. Mrs. Parker also planned and executed our very successful readathon as well. Kin kindergartners took a field trip to the aquarium on Roanoke Island and had a great day. First and second grade teams participated in their grant funded program through Janet's Pier Aquarium Scholars. Our fifth grade wax museum was a huge success. We are so proud of our students and their teachers Mrs. Eves and Mrs. Johnston for this feat. Jarvisburg Elementary School is hosting a bingo night this week. This event is open to the public on Thursday from 5.30 to 7.30. Then, now it's Island Elementary School. We've had a busy month since our last report to the board. Our readathon fundraiser for our STEM room is winding down. The response has been very good and we are confident that we will be able to finish strong and have plenty of funding to purchase additional hands-on resources to support enrichment learning opportunities for our students. Our third, fourth, and fifth grade Living Wax Museum was a huge success. Our younger students were able to visit during the morning, and we were so happy to welcome our community in the building during the afternoon session. We are excited to welcome Mrs. Persons' senior English students from Curta County High School as they come visit Knott's Island Elementary School. This is a collaborative learning opportunity with Mrs. Roch's first grade students at Knott Island. The high school students will be interviewing first graders as they work together to develop an original children's book. This will surely be a positive experience for both CCHS and KIES students. It's hard to believe that we'll be entering the last nine weeks of this school year. It's really flown by. Moyak Elementary School. Moyak Elementary is very excited after getting word from NCDPI of earning the statewide Purple Star Award for supporting military families who make up half the school population. More info to come, including an award presentation soon. Moyak Elementary School also conducted its Math 24 competition earlier today at the school level, with some former Panther leaders from Moyak Middle School even serving as proctors. The Math 24 team did an incredible job, and the winners are posted on the MES Facebook page. Upcoming events at MES include the Spring Book Fair beginning this Friday, March 18th through next week, as well as various field trips taking place, including trips to Jeanette's Pier, Norfolk Zoo, and the Children's Museum. Sophia, would you like to finish off? Yes, thank you. Uh, to start off with Merrick Middle School, uh, Merrick Middle School conducted our first Junior Beta Awards, our Junior Beta Awards initiative and wrapped up winter sports with a great showing in wrestling and girls basketball. Our newly formed student council is preparing to start doing the work of bringing student voice to our campus productivity and our early release club days are brimming with excitement. Our eighth graders are navigating the joys of registering for high school and are looking forward to interviews for JPNAP. Our next big event is our Spring Fling running fundraiser through our booster organization. Finally, with Shawboro Elementary School, Shawboro Elementary hosted our first ever STEM night for our Spring Title I event. We had rotating schedules where families would participate in hands-on STEM activities together. A few of the activities included marshmallow towers, building catapults, magnetic paint, and building a cell. Kids were smiling and enjoying the evening. We had a record number of attendees at over 400. It was a wonderful night. Thank you all for the update. A lot of things happening. Yeah. I have a question for Scarlett. Did you say some school celebrated Pi Day? Yes. yes. 
they did. Three. Wait, four. the one four. four. Yeah, that was yesterday. <laughs> but another way to celebrate that was eat a slice of pie. I read that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to do the hard part. <laughs> yeah, but it's lower calorie, 3.14. Yeah, that's, right, that's right. Pizza the, counted, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Dr. Matt Lutz is going to update us on our, our facilities. <clears throat> Okay. As always, we bring you the monthly construction update, and this will be on the docket for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, Mayock Elementary and Mayock Middle School expansion projects. Um, we have demoed the cafeteria at Mayock Elementary. The only thing left standing is the actual kitchen. We look forward to the connecting of the uh, cafeteria along with the new building and the old building. Um, IT requirements and FF and the Fixtures, furniture, and equipment are included in this work. Um, this is going to. This work also serves as a great preview for the upcoming new elementary school that we'll touch on in a bit. So, planning, designing, and preparation for install installation of the stormwater control system. Um, with the expansion, we were required to actually improve the stormwater control system as well. Mayock Middle School is about to begin construction. We're actually waiting on fencing, which again is another delay due to. COVID. All right, there's a couple pictures of the cafeteria demolition. And uh, this company does an, a remarkable job with sealing everything off. So what we saw with the elementary building, we're going to see a similar look for Mayock uh, Middle School when we add on the additional classrooms. It's bittersweet. Yes. The new construction update uh, for the Northern Elementary School off of Tulls Creek Road. Uh, Matt Mullins and I, along with the team from the, from the county, met and went over the request for qualifications. We had five bids submitted. Um, one of those uh, bids was uh, chosen, and the county is now reaching out to that bidder for more information. One other update I have is that the county and the school board have applied for a $30 million grant from the state uh, we're excited to have that opportunity. It is not tied to our tier status. We're a tier three county. It is not tied to um, our tax status or our free and, redu free and reduced lunch. So we hope that we can get that $30 million as we'll be able to stretch our local tax dollar even further. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Lutz. Ms. Renee Dowdy will bring us up to date on the resolution concerning our career and technical education graduation track. Good evening, Chairman Etheridge again, members of the board, Dr. Lutz. Uh, as a 20 plus uh, pu year public education veteran, but most importantly as a parent of students in our school system, I'm pleased to share a little bit with you and our community about the efforts of Curry Tech County Schools to advocate for an additional diploma track option for high school students other than the current one size fits all model. Our advocacy in Curry Tech County Schools began in the fall of 2016 when the district leaders brought together leaders from our surrounding school districts and invited Becky Taylor, who at the time was our regional state board of education member and staunch advocate for vocational education. The purpose of that meeting was to urge the state board of ed to consider adopting an additional diploma track option for high school students that centered on vocational education as an option rather than just a four-year univer four university track option. Since 2016, Curry Tech County Schools district staff has had subsequent meetings with elected officials, including former state superintendent Mark Johnson and staff Republic, uh, Re Representative Bobby Hannig and Senator Bob Steinberg. At each of those meetings, our message and our request were met with agreement and support. Today, I'm proud to acknowledge the perseverance of our board and district officials as we introduce a resolution to the North Carolina State Board of Education for a vocational diploma track option for students. Dr. Lutz plans to share this resolution with other superintendents in our region and across the state. At this time, it's my pleasure to have Dr. Bill Dobney to read the resolution. Thank you, Renee. Uh, before I begin to read this, the state did have a vocational education diploma track, 
but did away with it in 2014, I think it was. And why? It's beyond me. Anyway, the, our resolution reads, whereas not all students want to or need to go to college, and whereas North Carolina currently recognizes only one pathway to graduation for all students, and whereas North Carolina's current math requirement for all students are Math 1, which is Algebra 1, Math 2, Geometry, Math 3, that includes Algebra, Trig, and Precalculus, plus a fourth math course. Whereas students unsuccessful at meeting the math requirement are more likely to drop out. Whereas students unsuccessful at meeting the math requirement would benefit from technical math options. And whereas our educational system should be designed to allow all K-12 students a personalized education. And whereas a renewed emphasis should be placed on opportunities for high school students to pursue professional slash technical certificates through career and technical education, for all the old timers, that's vocational education <laughs> programs. <clears throat> and whereas students earning a trade or vocational diploma have the opportunity to enter into meaningful careers and accrue little to no student college loan uh, debt. And whereas we must join together to support all students in meeting their educational and career goals. Therefore, be it resolved that the Curry Tuck County Board of Education requests the State Board of Education to amend the career and college ready graduation requirement framework to provide an additional secondary diploma track that recognizes the values of career and technical education, vocational education. Be it further resolved that the Curry Tuck Board of Education recommends that a career and technical education, vocational education diploma track include technical math course options after the completion of Math 1 and informational literacy as it relates to career and technical education adopted by the Curry Tuck County Board this day if the board decides to adopt it. Madam Chairman, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Dobney. This is, we've been talking about this for several years and I, I would like to see, see this resolution submitted. And Dr. Lutz, we, we met earlier today. I, I hope the public knows that, that we don't get here at 6.30 and start talking about these things. We've, we met this afternoon starting at 3.15. So we've had in-depth discussions concerning a lot of the things that are on our agenda when we meet for our general membership meeting. Uh, Dr. Lutz is going to share that resolution with a lot of the other counties throughout our state. I think it's something that, that we need to, to approve. We have a lot of students that want to follow in the path of becoming a licensed plumber or electrician, um, whatever that uh, field may be, and with the current standards that we have that's not attainable in some in some instances and so that's the reason that we're trying to to get that changed because in our community as you know uh, we rely on tourism we, we rely on contractors welders all, all types of, of different uh, specialties and that's what we're hoping is our students will be able to reside in Currituck County and they won't have to go out of state to to make a good living. They can make a good living here locally. So that's the reason, one of the reasons that we're doing this. And one of the other things is we we feel like that many parents and and the general public don't don't realize that this this happened in 2014 that that we had a career a, a track that a diploma track that would allow this to happen and so what happens is kids get to high school and their parents realize oh my goodness you know now I have to so we have kids that are dropping out for that reason and, right. and we've been working on this as they said Dr. Dobney starting in 2016 I know we met with state elected officials in 2020 mm -hmm. and you know so this is just one more step and with that being said, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this resolution and send it to. I'll second that. 
Okay. And can we just encourage the public and parents, anyone watching, and to tell your uh, other you know peers to to talk <coughs> about this and spread the word and reach out to our representatives? It's always very important. Yes. If you don't mind, I'd like to add something super yes, quick. Yes, please, Daniel. Um, you know, I've I've been really lucky to be a part of the agriculture program at my school throughout the last four years. Um, and one thing that I can say about of being part of that program, um, there are many students that I see, you know, not succeeding in their classes within school. But that switches right when they get over to the ag program. And that's why I think so many of everyone here on the board and so many of our students are all so advocates for this right here because, um, you know, these these individuals they deserve the opportunity to thrive. Um, they deserve the opportunity to become licensed and to practice. So I'm really excited about this, um, and I think it's a great step in the right direction. Well, thank you. Yeah, and we and need we to make sure that people realize that we're not talking about not having the math rigor. Yes. It's just different. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be a different pathway. So what, what you all can do as student board members is spread the word. You know, have, have the students involved have them communicate with their parents. Their parents <laughs> and the students can reach out to our representatives, um, Bobby Hannig, Mr. Steinberg, and, and let them know that this is something that really needs to be addressed and really needs to be approved. And I think Ed Goodwin is one of the possible folks that will be representing our district after November. So uh, I do know Mr. Goodwin, and he is a advocate for young people, he'd be a good person to contact as well. So Chairman Etheridge, after the meeting, if the board does go ahead and move forward with the um, motion to approve the resolution, we will add this to our social media outlets and to our website to say this resolution was adopted by the board on this night. And then um, we will ask them to share. And we will also add contact information for those representatives should our public want to get behind us and help to advocate for us to have all students have an option uh, post-secondary. Thank you, Ms. Dowdy. It's, it is very important that the public get behind us. Yes, yes. very much They're so. They're going to listen to y'all more than they do us. <laughs> All right, we have a first and we have a second. We've had some discussion, Dr. Dobney. I'd like just a little more discussion. The technical math course options, it goes back to, you know, would you rather your HVAC installer be able to tell you the difference between a sine, cosine, and tangent, or be able to calculate the load on what your house needs as far as CFMs. Uh, as far as informational literacy, would you rather have your construction worker be able to read a tech manual or be able to tell you the symbolism in Hamlet's soliloquy? <laughs> now, and those are the salient points that we're <coughs> trying to make. You know, not all education is equal for all students. And, you know, if we don't get this, Look at all the opportunities our students have in this county if they have a career track in uh, one of the uh, construction trades, you know, with all the building going on up in Moyoc, you know. They could have a job right here and stay here because it used to be they called uh, our vocational track reading, writing, and the road to Norfolk Yeah, because that's where all the jobs were, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. That's right. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Domney. Any other discussion? We have a first, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Overnight field trips, Dr. Lutz. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. The bottom of the page. Oh, yeah, you did skip one. I did, didn't I? I can't see. I can't see. Okay. 2022, North Carolina School Board Association, the Legislative Committee, and we need to nominate one of our fellow board members. And I would like to do that now. Um, I would like to nominate Janet. Um, yeah, my brain just Rose. died. Would you let me My brain just died. Um, <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> Overload. I mean, good to company. represent <laughs> us in the NCB, uh, NCSBA Legislative Committee um, to um, work on their agenda for um, for um, 2022 and 23. And I would like to second that motion. Thank okay. you. I would love the opportunity if given it. Right. Any any discussion? Yes. Or are we, go ahead, if you get on this legislative committee, how about trying to convince <laughs> them to put this on? That's right. As yeah. soon as you get yeah. there. This yeah. is the mandatory. Yes. I have that something I'd like to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a first. We have a second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Janet will be representing Curry Tuck County. All right, now, Dr. Lutz, if you want to bring us up to date on some field trips, some fun things. And I, I think it's great that this board is nominating uh, Ms. Rose for that. I, I think it's important that we get active and reemerge and make sure that the state realizes what we have to offer. So, Janet, I'm thank you for taking that opportunity. Janet, put Curry Tuck on the map. That's yes. right. <laughs> okay, overnight field trips. We had multiple field trips, and it's exciting to see, um, I just put on here, a return to normalcy. A lot of trips, a lot of kids going places. I heard of field trips, and I'm, I'm happy for our, our students and for the general public that we're able to re-engage. Um, we have pretty much everything represented here, athletics, band, and FBLA. So the regional wrestling took place in Brunswick. State indoor track was in Winston-Salem. State wrestling was back to Greensboro. We had uh, Mayock Middle School District Band at UNC Wilmington, along with Curry Tech Middle School, that's also at UNC Wilmington. We had District Band for the high school, also at Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, basketball State Playoff game was held yet again, five hours away in Fayetteville, almost 300 miles. Uh, we also had the Hosa State Conference in Greensboro, along with FBLA with our high school, Curry Tech County High School, also in Greensboro, and J.P. Knapp at the same state leadership conference for FBLA at Greensboro. Coming up. coming up. So the North Carolina State Athletic Association still has not taken the student athlete into consideration, That's and still it. we travel miles and miss school? Yes. they are. We, we still travel. So if we had won that game, we would have turned around and played mm -hmm. again on the road. Um, I think the next trip would have been about 170 miles one way. That gets added to Ms. Rose's list, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to load her up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Lutz. Safe schools update. Ms. Virginia Arrington, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> the price is right. <laughs> <clears throat> that was a long walk. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Lutz, my statement is going to be very brief this evening. Since our last meeting, um, which was on February 9th, we have had 39 positive COVID cases reported in 16 quarantines, with the last three weeks having reported only five positive cases and zero quarantines. Wow. That's Yay, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. Appreciate that. Good news. Yes, it is. All right, so I need action. I need to know if we want to approve mask in schools or for someone to make a motion. Oh, we have to do that still? Every, Every day, month we still have to buy, do it. Still I make a motion that we continue to do optional mask in our schools. Okay, <laughs> and add to that with with buses and And, and same, also mm -hmm, with the buses, with the buses and, and okay. because transportation is not. St we still don't have we don't have to have it on. They're not required. Not required. Oh, so I am going to have to wear update. it on the airplane. <laughs> yes. Okay. We have a we have a motion to continue stay the course like it is now. Mask optional. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, mask optional until next month when we'll vote again. When when we were, Mrs. Peters and I were at my, uh, Curry Tuck Middle today, and we were in one of the art classes, and the teacher introduced us, and one of the students said, oh, yeah, those are those two that vote on whether we have to wear masks or not. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Did you have a bullseye on? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, Dr. Lutz, we're not having any problems with those that do choose to wear a mask. Absolutely correct? not. And okay. I'd say about 20% of the population. Is still wearing a mask. That's right. Good. And we've had no problems. Good. good. Yeah, that I'm aware their of. Their option, if they want to wear a mask, that's fine. All right. Our consent agenda, we do have to take action on that. Do I have a motion that we approve the consent agenda and we'll bring Ms. Mazell forward to talk about our budget amendments? I make a motion that we um, approve the consent agenda with the uh, addition with, of number five. Okay. 
Second. Have a first. Have a second. Any discussion? Yes. I thought we talked at one of the board meetings about if we were going to pull anything out of the consent agenda, that we would do it before the agenda was approved. We did. We yeah. Did. A day or two. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean. Oh, a day or two? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just, we just um, excluded it tonight. Ms. Rose, were you wishing a discussion or to be pulled? I just, w oh, I wanted uh, Ms. Sawyer to just explain it. Ex oh, I, yeah. Ms. Mazzell. That we can do. Not taking it off. I, I taking mean, it off. Right. Really. Just, just wanted her to explain it. To explain it. So, why we have these amendments? These three. I believe okay. it's three. Two, right. two Ms. Mazzell, would you come forward and, and I think you just want her to explain it yeah. and then it can be approved. That's right. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Madam Chair, fellow board members, Dr. Lutz. So in your packets, you should have several budget amendments there. And I'm going to start with the one that says state budget amendment. We have an increase to our state funds of a little over $1 million. Okay. Down in the bottom, you see the explanation there. It's coming from several places. We have several allotments that are coming in. The biggest part of this came from K-5 teachers, enhancement teachers. So that's music and art. This year for the first time, we got a special allotment just for those teachers, only for K-5, but we got 10 and a half. And then when we got our uh, ADM bump, we got another one position. Now in this amendment, the state bump is not here because this was done before we got the state bump. So some of that will be in the next budget amendment. Well, that's a pleasant change. It is. Yes. It's long is that, overdue. Is some of that because of, of the number change, the fact that the <clears throat> class size? Uh, it came, our ADM changed okay. from what they had originally okay. Okay. funded us. We but they have not funded. We got, okay. We got they that They haven't funded the music and the art in the elementary before, have they? No. So that is new and that is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can just get them to do outside of K-5 yeah. and pick up everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in addition to the K-5 enhancement teachers, you see CTE program support, school technology, disadvantaged students, behavioral support, AIG, limited English, transportation of pupils, state textbooks, and textbooks and digital resources. Do you want me to stop for questions after each one or? No. Okay. Okay, so the next one says local expenditures on it. We had an increase of $32,340.50 there. That came from a large variety of places. And this is allotments and adjustments that we're doing to the budget. So it involved classroom teachers, central office administration, non-instructional support, CTE months of employment, teacher assistance, transportation of pupils, classroom materials, county ambulance, local transportation costs, general operations, operation of plant, curriculum. And this is a new little piece. We split out the 1.3 additional funds that we got from the county. So we have additional county funds teachers, additional county funds teacher assistants, and additional county funds curriculum coaches, just as a way to kind of help us keep up with the extra money that we got, insurance and superintendent's office. So when we recall when our uh, commissioners um, agreed to fund us for our coaches, teachers, and teacher assistants, we agreed to run a separate PRC so that that money was directly allocated to that. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yes. Okay. The next one in your packet is federal expenditures. We had an increase of $1.9 there. And unfortunately, like everything else this year, our federal money has been trickling in late, and we continue to get extra pots of money coming in. So here, what you'll see is increases for IDEA Title VI B Preschool, Title I, Improving Teacher Quality, which I think most people refer to as Title II, SEA Title IV Student Support and Academic Enrichment, IDEA VI B Special Needs Targeted Assistance, IDEA targeted assistance for preschool federal grant. We have ESSER 2, ESSER 2 that was specific to child nutrition. 
ESSER 3 grants to states, ESSER 3 that was specific to preschool, ESSER 3 that's specific to homeless. There's actually two of those. There's homeless one and homeless two that are part of ESSER 3. Cyberbullying and suicide, and ESSER 3 that was our teacher bonuses. Okay. The next amendment is capital outlay, which is large. We have 22.3 million there, and that's a big bump because we have Mayock Middle School and Mayock Elementary's additions budgeted here. Okay. So even though it's flowing through the county, it still belongs to us, and they're making payments on our behalf, so I still have to book an entry for them. Okay. Okay. Additionally, in that $22 million that you see there is the modular unit for Mayock Elementary. Okay. And then there's just some small adjustments as Mr. Mullins is finishing out his projects. He reallocates to another project that he might need it for. Okay. All right. You're going to have two for other local expenditures. The first one says amended budget amendment number two. So the Budget amendment number two that you got in December had an error on it, so this is a sheet to correct it. And then the second one that you see is the current one for this go round. So we have a hundred and thirty five thousand dollar correct or not correction, but increase, and that came from school technology, language acquisition our Medicaid fee-for-service program, our NC DHHS K-12 COVID testing program, NC Arts Council grant, and our Chromebook insurance. Okay. Any questions? Any questions for Ms. Gazelle? Well, explained it well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. Chairman, I have a request. Yes. Could we provide the student board members with the public information part of our budget so they don't have to sit there wondering what we're talking about sure. and they can yeah. you know, have some information. Yeah, that's great. Ms. Jones, just uh, for, for our April meeting, we'll um, include those items so that they can follow along with us. Oh, bless you. Okay, so we had, a, for our consent agenda approval, we had a first and a second, correct? Any further discussion? If not, um, we'll vote. All in favor of aye. approval, say aye. All aye. opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Information items, please uh, put April 13th on your calendar. That's our next meeting starting at 4 o'clock at the Professional Learning Center. And then we'll have our regular scheduled meeting here at the Historic Courthouse at 630. We hope to see you all here. Board member comments. I'll start with Dr. Domney. Yes, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Sophia and Scarlett for uh, being named the new student board members. Uh, next, I hope we gain a lot of support for the resolution mm -hmm. as it goes through the uh, state and regional process. <clears throat> Uh, next, I would like the board to send a thank you note to the lady from what they say she has a That's store a up in Chesapeake that yes. did the uh, pre-K funding and that. Send a thank you nice. note on behalf of the board. And then the last thing, in you know, when we meeting comes on, you know, it shows me, and then in the next slide it shows me <laughs> and a dog. And that's our dr drug dog Hunter, mm -hmm. and I had this idea a number of years ago because we could never seemed to coordinate getting the drug dogs in from uh, the different areas. And so we decided to buy our own drug dog. And it's to, to my knowledge, Hunter's getting ready to retire. Aww. Okay. So. Wow, has it been that oh, long? That's a oh, while. Wow. I okay. guess they don't have to work long. <laughs> oh, Kevin's here. Is that, you know anything about that, Kevin? Yeah, that's true. One of our, um, the canine handler uh, is one of our stars. It's been somewhere in that neighborhood. Least, well, yeah. Jack, Jackie I Simmons was on the board one. Six years, they usually work till they're about eight or nine. I believe he's nine. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Yes. Probably about wow. right. 
Yeah. Hmm. Will he be replaced? I don't know. Had a lot of retirements. I guess we'd have to talk about that. And yeah. Replace him. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. All right, Dr. Domney, any other comments? No, that's it. All right, Ms. Kraft? Yes. Um, first of all, I guess like everywhere else, we've been experiencing um, having people uh, getting substitutes, getting uh, workers, and I just want to commend all of our schools for um, and the staff. Um, they're pulling together. They're covering classes. They're doing what they have to do. Uh, in the times when we're not able to cover with substitutes, so uh, I'm just really grateful for that. Uh, I walked through the greenhouse today, and uh, Ms. Peters and I did, and the plants are beautiful. There are plant sales happening uh, April 8th through the 9th, um, April 8th from 12 to 6, and April 9th from 8 to 4, and uh, if you get the opportunity to go, they're beautiful, and they usually um, lush, beautiful plants, so... Um, support them if you can. Um, and I did spend the day with Ms. Peters. Um, we were touring our two middle schools and our high school. I want to also welcome our stu two student board members. We're excited about having you. And um, I traveled over to Knott's Island for their 3, 4, and 5 um, wax museum. The students did an awesome job. It was amazing. Um, I'm always uh, astounded at the costumes and and their abilities to stand up there and, and do that over and over and over. So, um, yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Mm -hmm. Ms. Peters? Um, well, I just wanted to, again, congratulate our new student board members and to the parents. You should be very proud. They did a great job in the interviewing, and they always impress us so much, and it, it's a very hard decision, but they did great, and you should be proud. Um, as Ms. Kraft said, the Wax Museum I attended at Knott's Island Elementary, those kids, if, if you're not aware of what that is, the kids research someone. It can be in history or presence, a hero, somebody who made a mark. And then they have to memorize it, dress in character, and they have a made-up button. And you go up and you push <laughs> the button. So however many times you go up there. And um, those kids did a great job. And uh, that was really a lot of fun. They were really excited to do it. So. I, you know, if your school does it, I encourage you to try to go to that. That's a great time. Um, yes, we, Mrs. Kraft and I toured Moyak Middle, Curry Tuck Middle, and the high school, CCHS. Um, we saw baby chickens at <laughs> <laughs> Moyak Middle. They're so cute. And unhatched eggs. Right, at Curry Tuck Middle. Um, the, the kids, everyone was, I mean, it was just, it was a great atmosphere at both schools. Our middle schools really, they were engaged. The teachers were doing a great job. Um, we talked to a lot of staff. Um, so thank, the, thank you to all of them who took the time to, you know, in between to chat with us. And um, we appreciate that. Um, and like uh, Mrs. Etheridge has said before, we do meet during our work sessions before this, and we talk in real detail about a lot of things that, seem kind of quick up here but so I encourage people to you know if you have questions you can go back and watch that um, one of the things we talked about this afternoon was was bullying uh, we feel that maybe with COVID the effects and what we're seeing and I tend to ask parents to do do some of the, the work on their end talk to your kids reach out to them you know they're they may have no problem readjusting being back in school back to normal but their friend may have a hard time, you know, talk to them. If you have that extroverted child, tell them, reach out, check on their friend, you know, do your part. So I just wanted to, you know, talk about that for a minute and um, just thank all of our staff and congratulations, wow, to, to the transportation, those employees mm -hmm. with all those years of service. That's something to be proud of and uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rose? Well, I want to say welcome to Sophia and Scarlett. We're happy to have you on the board. And um, hats off to a lot of folks working hard in their schools. I did see this week where high school Air Force JROTC cadets and Colonel Grimes marched 16 miles from Kitty Hawk to Kill Devil Hills to comm commemorate, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, the Baton Death March. Yes. Is that you they did correct. that, yep. in which many Filipino and Americans died after they were forced to work, walk 70 miles mm -hmm. by the Imperial Japanese Army. I, I really, hats off to them. 
March is National Music Month in our schools, and I've been reading a lot about our high school and our two middle school bands. They have gone to competitions and assessments and earned excellent and superior rankings or ratings. Very good for them. A week or so ago, I had the opportunity to attend the chess tournament mm-hmm. at Currituck County Middle School. Hats off to Mr. Pinto and all of the students who ranged in age from kindergarten on up to high school. His kindergartner. It was, yes, <laughs> yes. It was amazing to see those kids strategizing. I, it really was. And wow. I, I want to echo Ms. Peters' thoughts on the bullying. You know, bullying is not tolerated in any of our schools, but we have to know about it to try and take care of it. So, you know, if please encourage your students to not just tell you if they're being bullied, but share with us if they see a classmate being bullied. So maybe we can intervene. Um, one more thing, prom. Prom's coming up. I've had some Curry Tuck County High School students and parents reach out and want the prom off campus. And as Dr. Lutz explained, plans were already in the works when that was mentioned to them. So if if that's something they want for next year, they need to reach out to Dr. Durham early in the year, like August. Uh, April 8th, 9th, and 10th, we've got a play coming up. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. Get your tickets. It's always a great performance by our students. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Rose. Dr. Lutz? All right. Welcome, Scarlett, Sophia. Very nice to have you. It sure was nice to have a board meeting where we didn't have a lengthy uh, mass discussion. And <laughs> I think we might be on the other side of COVID. I hope and so. And so I think we all, I, I, again, we've talked about that continuously for all, two years, literally two years. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the 15th. It started on the 13th. And, um, again, I think Currituck County Schools has weathered the storm very, very well. And I'm proud to be working here. Um, again, thank you to our support staff. Um, it is also School Social Worker Appreciation Week last week. Wanted to point that out. Happy birthday, Sandy Reynolds. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy Look at birthday, <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates that. Yeah, I'm sure she um, does. We also received an award for $109,000 from the state for athletic fields, mm-hmm. for athletic purposes. And with that money, we are going to be replacing uh, the press box for our girls' softball program and our boys' baseball team. Great. That's um, awesome. Accreditation update. We have submitted paperwork. Thanks to Dr. Durham. We're moving that forward, waiting to hear back from the state. And, Daniel, I am not shocked to find out that you were first in interviewing <laughs> I was like, duh. <laughs> Can we say congratulations to Daniel real quick? Can yes. you let everyone please know what what your big week was and what you were awarded? Yeah, um, so I was very honored um, to be awarded um, the EC Scholar Award from East Carolina University. Um, there was over 4,500 applicants this year, and I was selected in the top 20 um, for a full-ride scholarship to that university and a really great program that I'm super excited for. So Woo! I want to appreciate everyone's support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yay. Congratulations. Well deserved. What an honor. Yes. Um, to say that we are Curry Tuck proud is an understatement. That's right. Oh, happy for you. All right. Well, Madam happy- Chairman. Yes, sir. I've been sitting here all night looking at the scouts down here. Yeah. Wondering Me too. What are they? They're are they probably, well, I'm not going to guess. Bad, Please let us know why you're here, but I think I'd. We are here working on a citizenship in the community merit badge. Yay. Um, Well, we're pleased that you're here, and thank you for being here. Learning thank so you. many yeah, Now, how many hours? Is it hours that you have to have, or what's? 
No, just to attend. We have to attend the meeting, and we have to take notes on a topic that we're going to talk about. Okay. Well, thank you again for being here. Yes, good we job. We appreciate it. I'd also like to acknowledge that one of the members of your board up there is also in our group. 182 and he's an Eagle Scout. Oh. <laughs> How many Eagle Clones is Albert? Albert. Albert. Woo! That's awesome. <laughs> I tell you what. Sorry. What was the troop? 182. Um, 182. 182. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you we for sharing it. that about Albert. We're yes. very proud of yeah, all of our board members. <laughs> Again, to say that we're Curry Tuck proud is an understatement, <laughs> Albert. Thank you. How many years have you been in Scouts? Eight years. Eight, Eight years. Wow. wow. Scouts have a lot to live up to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. They've set the bar high. Well, I just want to close the meeting and tell everyone I appreciate you being here tonight. Happy early spring. I know we're, we're pushing it, but I'm ready for it. I know you are. I was able to attend the Jarvisburg Elementary School. Um, recently, they hosted their fifth grade Living Wax Museum. I know you heard the other board members speak about this. This is one of my favorite events, but this year it was extra special to me because one of my granddaughters, Lizelle Etheridge, was able to participate. And she was um, portrayed a lady by the name of Penelope Barker. Uh -huh. And she was, a, she was an American Revolution supporter and participated in the Edenton Tea Party, and she boycotted high taxes. Imagine that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we need her back. <laughs> we need her back. And uh, she did a wonderful job. And all the teachers and the students, I just, I just love. Oh, i got to tell you this because I know you all think this is funny. I went up to one of them, and I forgot about they have a red button on their, on their hand. So I just got there, and I stood in front of this student. <laughs> like this and I was like anytime thinking <laughs> and, he, and he stood there and I stood there <laughs> and then I moved on because <laughs> I, I didn't press the button oh, so he didn't. <laughs> <my goodness. laughs> but anyway that's <laughs> they were in character they were sure. in character I was I forgot I was supposed to press the button on the hand oh. but then I got the hang of it um oh. We welcome you, Scarlett, Sophia. We look forward to working with you, and we're so glad that you're on the board. We really appreciate your willingness to serve. And with that being said, I would like to make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I'll second. second Have a first and a second. Any discussion? With, with not having any discussion, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for being here.